So I've answered quite a few of your questions in part one. Um, part two, I'm going to go for a few more. So first question is um, leggings or trackies? <laughs> Does it matter? Um, leggings, personally, if I'm working out, leggings or shorts. Um, trackies tend to get too hot. Um, especially if you're in a sweaty class, so definitely leggings or skins as they like to call them now. Um, if you're asking for my opinion on which brands, um, Adidas or Reebok. Okay, simples. Uh, next question is uh, treadmill or road running? Personally, treadmill. Um, I used to do a lot of road running uh, in my younger days. Um, and I found that the impact on the concrete used to really knacker my knees. So uh, having had knee injury in the past, as many of you know, road running had to get knocked on the head and treadmill as it sprung loaded, definitely much better for the impact on your joints. Um, here's a good one. Is it true that spin is bad for my knees? No, spin is not bad for your knees if you do it properly. Um, if you're finding that you've got pain in your knees when you're doing spin, it's probably because your saddle is in the wrong position, whether it be too high, too low, too far forward or too far back. Um, if you've got a good spin instructor, ask them and they will be able to help you set up your saddle so it's in the perfect position for you. Um, it's very difficult to try and explain it when you've not got a spin bike or someone on a spin bike next to you to demonstrate it, but uh, all spin instructors go through the same training. so. When you're next in the spin studio, just before the class is about to start and the instructor's milling about, just ask them to check your saddle position and they should be able to get you in the right place. So you should find that your discomfort through your knees will massively reduce. Okay. Um, another great one here. Why does my back hurt after I've been out running? Um, kind of comes back to what I was just saying about road running really. Um, if you are out running outdoors, the ground is a lot harder, it undulates, it's not always 100% level um, and it can have a massive impact on your, your knees, your hips and then up into your back as well. Uh, it could also be that you've got a very weak core um, and you're not holding your posture properly when you're running. So um, there are a number of reasons but we can obviously look at those um, more individually if you wanted to uh in a one-to-one -one level on a one-to-one -one level um but yes it might just be that because you've got a weak core you're not holding yourself or your running technique itself is quite bad so next time you're out running have a, a conscious make a conscious effort to have a look and see if when you your foot hits the floor whether your heel hits the first foot hits the floor first or whether your toe hits the floor first because that makes a big difference to the impact going through the rest of your body um, remember that impact obviously travels up so if you're hitting your foot down quite hard it's going to ricochet through the joints up into your back and that's where the buck stops with most of these impact injuries in your back so just take care and if it is hurting try a treadmill and see if it's the same because if it's if it differs between road and treadmill it is very much so the impact okay um let's have a quick look is it true i shouldn't eat carbohydrates after 4 p.m myth um some people like to believe this one and they think that if they eat carbohydrates after 4 p.m then it's going to stay on their hips forever and eternity um truth is it doesn't matter what time of day it is when you eat calories of any description whether it be carbs protein or fat um calories are calories and what you intake during the day is what you intake during a day Anything that's in your system overnight is just being utilised to keep you alive and keep your body functioning. So even whilst you're sleeping, you are still expending calories, okay? Um, many people believe this, you shouldn't eat certain foods after 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock. If you're not getting home from work till 8.20 in the evening, what are you going to do? Not eat. Eat moderately, eat food in moderation, eat sensibly and eat the right foods and there's no problem with when you eat it, okay? Um, a question here, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to answer it fully because this is one that differs from person to person. So it, the question is um, from Lisa, 
um, why do I keep feeling bloaty? So the chances are you're, you're bloating because of a certain type of food that you're eating or, or something that's within the food. So many clients who I've worked with on a nutritional level before have had ex exactly the same thing. They feel bloaty. It could be a mild intolerance to food. So it might be something that you're you're slightly wheat intolerant or grain or gluten or, you know, something that's just affecting your body. Um, the easiest way to, to find out is to actually just look at what you're eating, when you're eating it and when you feel that way. So again, keeping a food diary um, and when you feel bloated, make a note of it near the foods that you've eaten. Uh, and then you might see a pattern emerging where certain foods are actually the, the reason for that. So for myself, white bread is always one that makes me feel a bit lethargic and a bit bleh. So I don't eat white bread and I don't feel that way anymore. So problem solved. Okay, you've just got to find what it is that causes it. Try and remove or replace that out of the diet and then you're, you're winning. All right. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. But that is a question that is really difficult to answer because everyone is different. Right. Um, belter of a question. Is a 500 cal calorie diet bad for you? In short, yes. The minimum amount of calories required, very minimum, and this goes for every single person, is 1,200 calories a day. Okay, If you eat less than 1,200 calories a day, then you're not going to be having enough to keep your body running. So as I mentioned in one of the last questions, um, even when you're asleep or you're doing nothing, your body is still, is still burning off calories to, to keep your organs functioning, to keep you breathing, to keep your blood pumping, your heart pumping. So if you're restricting your your diet by such a huge amount it's not going to be good for you so make sure you're eating at a very minimum 1200 calories per day okay um, and try and make those healthy calories as well um how can i drop a dress size in four weeks um eat well work out simple um, there's a little saying that goes around uh, gyms, fitness instructors, fitness fanatics, which is um, eat clean, train dirty. So basically that means eat healthy, train like an absolute nutter when you're in your classes or in the gym. So you know that you're doing everything that you can. Um, if you want to achieve something, you've got to work for it. It's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. So to lose a dress size in four weeks, doable, possibly, yes. Um hard work probably but uh yeah it can be done okay so just eat well work out hard and avoid all the naughty snacks and nibbles and treats and alcohol okay um how much water should i be drinking a day two liters is the the recommended amount um but again it differs from person to person so the easiest way to tell how much water you need to drink is by the color of your wheat um if you have quite a dark coloured um, wee when you go to the toilet, then you're probably quite dehydrated. So it should be like a light straw coloured um, consistency. You know, it, it should be quite light. Um, but yeah, two litres a day is recommended, but you can tell by the colour of your urine. I uh, hope that helps. Um, how many times a week should I exercise? Kind of touched on this in one of the last questions. You should be exercising maybe three or four times a week. Um, the healthy government guideline is 30 minutes a day, but obviously most classes, most fitness sessions are an hour. So three or four times a week broken down is, is approximately the right level. As long as you're working hard, you know, don't walk into a class and, or a, a fitness session or a gym and just go through the motions of being there and expecting that to be enough. You've got to put in effort. Um, if any of you have been to my classes and seen me working out or been to the gym when I've been in there, you will know that I don't do half measures when I'm training. Um, and that's probably why I, I stay the size and shape that I am, because I, I do put the effort in. So just make sure that you, you, you give it your all. Um, feel proud of yourself when you finish. You know, being sweaty isn't necessarily a bad thing. You should embrace that and embrace the burn and embrace the ache that you get a few days later because it all means that you're working yourself to actually achieve your, your bigger goal, okay? Um, 
I've got bad knees, what should I avoid? How many of you out there have got bad knees? It's one of the biggest things I think I deal with. Um, squats and lunges can be quite hard when you've got an injury on the knee or um, a long-term problem with your knees. So you just want to avoid things that actually make it hurt. Best thing to do is actually look at your technique though because nine times out of ten when I've gone to do an assessment on someone um, who said I can't do squats and lunges because I've got a bad knee, it's because they're doing the squats and lunges really, really poorly. So um, I will be doing some technique videos soon so as soon as I've got those done and up on YouTube you'll be able to have a look and see how you should be squatting and lunging, how you should be doing tummy crunches, things like that. Um, but there isn't necessarily anything you should avoid unless it's painful. So just avoid the things that actually make it hurt. Um, you want to build the muscles up around the knee because that will help support the knee structure as well. So squats and lunges are exactly going to do that. Uh, there are alternative squats and lunges. So you could do curtsy lunges or, or you know half squats, things like that. So demi squats. It just it's down to individual pre preference. Um, but if you do want to have a chat about it or you want to work on, on building your knee strength up, then just let me know because that is something that I am very hot on after having knee surgery myself. Okay, um, last one for this part is, is meat good for you or bad? Meat is good. Meat is protein on a plate. Okay, so you when you eat meat, um, and sorry vegetarians and vegans out there, I know there are a few of you. When you eat meat, you are basically in muscle, okay? So it's the muscle of the animal that you're eating. Um, you can have bad meat, but that's generally because of the way it's cooked. So if it's cooked in a lump of lard, it's not going to be very good for you. If it's fried, you know, dry grilled, dare I say George Foreman type thing, um, it's fine because that drains the fat out. But meat is good for you because that is high protein, good food. Um, as long as it's not cooked in dripping and fat and, and all loads of stodgy stuff. Um, and it's low carb, so there's no sh there's no real sugar content or carb content in meat, it is just protein. Okay, so uh, that's part two done. So any more questions, obviously I'm going to start doing this more regularly because people do ask me a lot of questions. So... Um, Keep emailing them into me and I'll I will keep answering them for you as and when I can. All right. Hope I've helped. And obviously, if you need to go through anything with any of them, then just let me know and I will try and reply as soon as I can.